I am Leo Laporte. We've got some great products for you this weekend before you buy a, a watch that works out so you don't have to. And this, this is something Eileen Rivera is very excited about, including some new phones and a camera from Panasonic. It's all coming up next. Remember to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Stamps.com. Nobody likes waiting in line at the post office. That's why I use and recommend Stamps.com. Buy and print official U.S. postage using your own computer and printer. You never have to go to the post office again. For my special offer, visit Stamps.com. Click the radio microphone up at the top there and enter the offer code before you buy. And buy Ford. Featuring Curve Control to help protect against crashes on curves. Look for Curve Control in the 2013 Ford Taurus. And learn more at Ford.com slash cars slash Taurus. Leo Laporte here for Before You Buy. I love doing this show because I get to play with all sorts of new gadgets. The idea of Before You Buy is we get the latest and greatest gadgets in the house, and then we let our staff, everybody in the staff, uh, review it. So, you know, they get to kind of fight over who gets to review what, and uh, then they come back to us. Oftentimes, it's a it's a pretty obvious uh, thing. Eileen will review the Android tablets, and Nicole's great with phones. We couldn't figure out, though, who should review this. Uh, this is called the Moto Active, a fitness tracker from Motorola. And we're all so fat and out of shape. We actually had to find somebody who is in shape, who run. No, I'm just kidding. Many of us do run, in fact. Many of them do run, as a matter of fact. And Ayaz Akhtar said, let me try it. So we're going to let him uh, review it from Tech News Today. Ayaz reviews the Moto, Mo <laughs> the Moto Active. Ayaz? I seem to have walked past you guys while I was on my, my jog. Today we're taking a look at the Moto Active. It's this device, it's a fitness device with all kinds of things crammed into it. I gotta catch my breath because I'm out of shape. And I'll tell you about it in a second. All right, I'm gonna stop that workout, which was exciting. Now, of course, people are going to compare the Moto Active to the iPod Nano. As you can see, the Active is much larger than the Nano, but there's a good reason for that. The Active packs in a GPS sensor, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. This thing syncs up via Wi-Fi, unlike this little thing, which may be light and may act as a pedometer, but it can't do what the Moto Active does. Moto Active is a fitness device, right? It was tracking me running, uh, running with a GPS sensor. So when this is paired up and synced with the Moto Active service, which I think is at MotoActive.com, what you'll see is my actual running route. And what you can do is you can get a lot of metrics about that. So if you're really concerned about how long was that run in the first place, or you're like, what was my pace? All of that data is synced up with this device. Now maybe running isn't your thing. It also handles a lot of other activities including walking, an elliptical machine, or if you're going to do steps. You do have to tell the device what you're doing every single time, so it's not like it's smartly figuring out what you're doing. If you stop while you're running, you just take a little break, it's going to still count that as running, which means your pace will change. So just be aware of that kind of stuff. As for the actual hardware, it's pretty sturdy. There's a lot of large buttons on this thing, and you don't want to be fumbling around with this touch screen because you're running, okay? You're tired, you want to just kind of press something real fast. This actually is quite responsive. On top of that, the touchscreen itself is also very responsive. I didn't have to type everything through this because everything is synced via the MotoCast software which you install. This Moto Active is not just a fitness device. It can be paired up with a Motorola phone if you get the Moto Active app, which is available for only Motorola Act, uh, Android phones, that is. Here's how it works. You pair the device, it's a pretty simple process. You can get your notifications. You are supposed to be able to answer calls via the screen itself. I was not able to. I don't know if that's just a weird bug or not. But here's one of the weird quirks about this. You can go to the notifications. You can select one of the notifications. But after you read it, it doesn't seem to update the phone. You still have everything in your notification tray. You might like that. You might not like that. For me, I think they should be in sync. But they're not. So even if I look it up on this, by the way, this doesn't change either. These are somewhat separate devices even though they talk to each other. Now these headphones 
or from Motorola, they cost $100. They are separate. They come in with some kind of heart rate monitor so I can get better metrics with the Moto Active, but the Moto Active doesn't come with them. It's an extra expense if you want to keep track of your heart rate. As a music player, it's pretty good. I mean, the thing is that everything's intuitive. It's what you expect out of a touchscreen device at this point. And there's a nice handy feature if you are just tired and you're like, I can't run anymore. You just hit the little lightning button. That's your fitness song, which you can set right on the device, by the way. You don't have to do that on the Motorola software. You can do it on the device thanks to uh, some smart thinking there. And of course, I get to listen to Copacabana as my extra power song. If you wanted to, you could use the Moto Active as a watch. There are a couple of time faces built in so you can have a, an analog look. A weird one is a skull if you want to be kind of tough and bad with your Moto Active. You could have that. On top of that, when you're actually looking at the display, there's always a calorie meter and there is the amount of steps you're running. So that's always nice to see right up front. When we tested out the Moto Active, it only had a couple of workout modes, including running and walking. But a new software update brings 40 activities, including skiing and dancing. On the pro side, this is actually a pretty solid piece of hardware. The touchscreen is very responsive. The big buttons make it very easy to press when you're running. It's got a really nice design when it comes to its, its uh, aesthetics. On top of that, Motorola was very smart to make sure most of the stuff you were doing was on a computer. Again, even with the touchscreen, you don't want to be putting in Wi-Fi passwords and all kinds of things like that. The, all the sensors built in, another giant pro. GPS, so you actually know which route you're running. Wi-Fi, so you can sync it when you're on your Wi-Fi network. And Bluetooth, so if you wanted some Bluetooth headphones, you could do that and you could pair it with a phone. On the con side, when it comes to the Moto Active, I found it kind of strange that the notifications don't seem to sync up properly with the phone. On top of that, it's 250 bucks. That's for the eight gigabyte model. Uh, you really want to have metrics, then that'll work for you. If you wanted some kind of cool little nano competitor, this isn't the right device for you. All right, so is this a try, buy, or bub buy kind of device? Well, it's definitely a try. If you are willing to spend some money so you can have your fitness tracked really well, this is the thing for you. You gotta think about it. 250 bucks isn't so bad if you're morbidly obese and you have huge medical bills. It's only 250 bucks. But if you're gonna use it as a music player, it's not really that worth it. If you're gonna use it like a Dick Tracy watch, not worth it. But if you wanna get fit, you should give this thing a try. I'm Isaac Actor with Twit, and I got a run to complete. I'll see you guys later. Wow, actually, I has actually ran. I saw him in shorts and everything, and he sweated on the watch. Well, I guess you had to because they say it's it's a sweat proof. Um, coming up in just a bit, we're going to review of an inexpensive phone that actually provides a pretty good value. Nicole Lee with the Pantech Burst. It's pretty too, isn't it? I like that color. Before we talk about that, though, I'd sure like to talk about my good friends at Stamps.com. Man, the last thing you want to do is wait in line at the post office. But it seems that more and more, that's what you have to do. Uh, post offices are closing. They're laying off employees. There's a new stamp. The prices are going up. So everybody's at the post office these days. Wouldn't it be cool if you could do everything you needed to do right from your desk? Well, you can with Stamps.com. Stamps.com lets you, lets you print official U.S. postage from your own computer, Mac or PC, and your own printer. You don't need any special inks. You don't need a postage meter. You just need Stamps.com. And Stamps.com has offers, deals, discounts you can't get at the post office. Uh, as much as, uh, I think, 21% off priority mail. Isn't that a good deal? 15% uh, off priority mail. 21% off express mail. It's also great if you're an eBay seller or an Amazon seller because it, it does all the paperwork for you. It sets it up. You've got a special USB scale you put the package on so you always spend exactly the right amount on postage. And what's beautiful is you don't even have to bring the, the, the package into the post office. You know, uh, the post office has a rule that you cannot mail a package more than 13 ounces in the regular mailbox. They want to see you. Make sure it doesn't contain anything untoward. But if you use Stamps.com, they waive that regulation. No matter what size your package, you print out the postage on Stamps.com, slap it on the package, the mail carrier comes and picks it up absolutely free at any size. I can go on and on, but the best thing to do is to try Stamps.com right now. Visit the website, Stamps.com. Now, there's a special offer on the front there, an $80 trial offer. Don't do that one. Don't click the microphone at the top. It's, I know it says radio microphone. But click that microphone. It kind of looks like this one a little bit. At the top there. And enter in before you buy. One word. Before you, B-U-Y. And you're going to get a $110 bonus offer. It includes the digital scale I just mentioned. Great USB scale. Useful for a lot of things. Uh, it also includes a, a coupon good for $55 in postage. Free. So if you've got some mailings coming up, this is a great deal. 
Free digital scale, $55 in postage coupons, $5 supply kit, and a four-week trial. All of that worth $110 in yours right now when you visit Stamps.com. Click that microphone there and use the offer code before you buy. Stamps.com! I've been using it, I think, since 2001. When did they start? I think since 2001. And I just adore it. Uh, Stamps.com. All right, let's continue on, shall we? Uh, this is called the Pantech Burst. Pantech's make, making quite a name for itself uh, with relatively inexpensive uh, Android phones. Kind of, kind of, they're kind of like the Vizio of smartphones. This one's from AT and T, and we have no one with more expertise in reviewing cell phones. She did it for years at CNET than our very own Nicole Lee, producer of this program. So we thought, let's let Nicole try the Pantech Burst. Nicole, I'm Nicole Lee from Twit, and before you buy, and this is my review of the Pantech Burst an entry-level smartphone from AT&T. In fact, the Pantech Burst is very affordable at only around $50 of a new two-year service agreement. But for that price, you get a lot of bang for your money. Let's start with the design. On the front here, you get a 4-inch WVGA uh, Super AMOLED display. Now, this is a very bright, crisp, colorful display. It's very similar to the display on the Samsung Nexus S, but without the curvature of the Nexus. Underneath the display, you do get the usual four capacitive touch keys for a home menu, back and the search functions. On the top here, you do get the uh, screen lock key as well as the headset jack. On the side here, you get the usual micro USB port. And on the other side, you do get a volume rocker. The overall design of the phone is quite nice and compact, very slim and lightweight. Um, the corners here are curved, so it's nice, nice to hold in the hand. On the back, you get a very interesting design detail, sort of a raised platform. Not too functional as far as I can see, but a nice design detail on this, all the same. On the back, you get a 5 megapixel camera with an LED flash. And above the display, you do get a front-facing VGA camera for video calls and so forth. The Pantech Burst comes with Android 2.3. 0.5 gingerbread, not ice cream sandwich. I apologize for all you Android fans out there, but it is an entry level smartphone, so we give Pantech a little bit of a leeway with this one. The Pantech Burst has Pantech's own Android interface on it. Like, it's very similar to other Android skins like the HTC Sense or Samsung's TouchWiz interface, but this is Pantech's own design. The most interesting thing about the Pantech interface is the lock screen. On the lock screen itself, you get uh, a circle here with various shortcuts you can just drag to. For example, you can just drag the lock uh, icon to the middle circle and you unlock the phone. Other shortcuts include to launch a browser, just drag the browser icon to the middle. It'll launch the browser. So, you know, it's pretty good. For example, the call log, the messaging function, the music player, and the email function. However, I have to say it's not very customizable. For example, the email shortcut is for the email app, not the Gmail app. That's the one where you enter in your own email information like Exchange and Pop3 and all that. I don't really use my own email. I just use Gmail mostly. So not a very functional lock screen. You can't change it either. Now we come to the specifications of the Pantech Burst. As we said, it's an entry-level smartphone, so we were very impressed that the Burst comes with a 1.5 gigahertz dual-core Qualcomm Snapdragon S3 processor, and it's one gigabyte of RAM as well. That means it's really fast, really smooth, multitasking was a breeze, everything's really snappy and fast. Another thing we love about the Pantech Burst, it has 4G LTE service. Not too many AT&T phones come with 4G LTE, so this is a great pro with uh, the Pantech Burst. I tried the 4G LTE in San Francisco and it was a little spotty here and there, but I did get uh, around 20 megabits per second down, which is amazing. The Pantech Burst has 16 gigabytes internal storage. It's also a micro SD card slot if you want to expand it up to 32 gigabytes. The camera on the Pantech Burst is only five megapixels, as I said, and I have to say the camera quality was only so-so. Low light photos were a little dim and kind of grainy. They just weren't as sharp as I would like. A huge pro is only $50 when you tier your service agreement. That's really inexpensive for what you get for the Pantech Burst. Another pro is that it has 4G LTE service and it also has a 1.5 gigahertz dual core processor. Now for the downsides. The camera quality isn't that great. 
and the battery life isn't that good either. Also, we didn't like that you couldn't customize the lock screen shortcuts. Now for buy, try, or don't buy, I have to say it's a buy. For only $50 of a new two-year service agreement, you get a really competent smartphone. You get a 4G LTE smartphone, really fast and snappy, a few downsides here and there, but overall, a very nice phone for the price. I'm Nicole Lin. This has been the review of the Pantech Burst. Nicole likes it. I, I think it is a good deal. I mean, a dual-core processor, uh, the latest gingerbread, a beautiful... I mean, the, the display really is beautiful. I thought only Samsung could do Super AMOLEDs, but this is a great Super AMOLED screen. Uh, a gig of RAM, a 5-megapixel camera, all of that for uh, $50. That's a great deal. I like it, I, and I agree with Nicole. That's it. That's uh, something worth looking at. We have a couple of mini reviews. Are you ready? We're going to have three products, two reviews. We're jamming them up, starting with Tony Wang, our photo guy. He's going to review this little this little doohickey. I'm kind of excited about it. This is the Panasonic Lumix FX90 with built-in Wi-Fi. Let's see what Tony Wang, our editor, thinks. I'm Tony for Twit, and today I am reviewing the Panasonic Lumix FX90. The FX90 is a 12 megapixel point issue with 5x optical zoom from 24 to 120 millimeter, and it's even got a 4x digital zoom. The maximum aperture goes from 2.5 to 5.9, depending on your zoom. Just like any other point and shoot camera in the market today, this does shoot HD video in um, AVC HD. One of the most notable features on this camera is the built in wireless. And that allows you to connect to your Wi-Fi at, at home or um, to your iPhone or your Android phone uh, using uh, Panasonic's uh, Lumix Link app. And what that does is after you take your photo, it will automatically upload to Lumix Link portal. And that will let you then forward your photo to either Facebook or Flickr. So pros of the camera, you do get a lot for the money you pay for for this camera. And um, you also get some onboard memory, about 40 megabytes, unless you take about 10 pictures, depending on what megapixel you're shooting. Cons of this camera, um, the focusing isn't very fast. It takes almost twice as long as the S100 to focus, um, depending on how close I am to the subject. Buy, try, or don't buy, this is a don't buy for me. I'm Tony for Twit, and this is the Panasonic Lumix FX90. I'm Nicole Lee from Twit. And I'm Tony Wayne from Twit. And uh, we're going to be reviewing the T-Mobile MyTouch phones, the MyTouch and the MyTouch Q from T-Mobile. The interesting thing about these two MyTouch phones is that they're the first from LG. All the previous MyTouch phones from T-Mobile has been from HTC. Now, these are supposed to be sort of budget-friendly yeah, smartphones. Yeah, entry-level. Entry-level smartphones. Yeah. And I have to say... The build quality kind of reflects on it a little bit. I don't know what you think of the build quality. Yeah, I guess you know mine's a little bit different because it's got moving part. And it's comparable to Motorola's, which is not too shabby. And very similar, you know, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all of the things you usually expect. Um, I think they both have uh, 2 gigabytes of internal memory, uh, 32 gigabytes of expendable memory with the micro SD card slot. I don't know if you can... Mine's sort of behind the battery, I think. I never found mine. I don't know where it is. <laughs> I, think I think it's behind, okay. behind the battery. So overall, um, my T-Mobile MyTouch is $79 um, with a two-year contract. And yours is also, also $79, $79 with a two-year contract. Um, do you think, I mean, you know, very quickly, like pros and cons, like what, what do you think of the device? I mean, it's it's definitely more affordable in terms of all these Android phones. I mean, we're seeing like the Motorola Razr, which is I think three hundred dollars. Yeah, three hundred dollars. Same thing with Resound, yeah. three hundred dollars. <laughs> so, uh, if you're on a budget, this is a, a great phone to get. I think. I mean, even this this uh, My Touch Q is actually cheaper than the previous generation My Touch with a keyboard. Yeah, because I think even Grant, that My Touch was not. Grant, yeah, granted, that one had a lot of you know really good features like a really, really fast camera, an 8 megapixel, um, I think it's yeah, F2.2, mm -hmm. and that's from HTC. But, I mean, for $79, this is definitely worth uh, checking out, especially if you're looking for a keyboard. I mean, this is really the selling point of this device. Yeah. So under $100 with a keyboard, I say buy. Okay. I have to say, sort of try on mine, just because I do think $79 is 
a lot for an entry level phone. But you know, it, the screen does look really nice. It's AMOLED display. It is, it is very smooth. Um, but I just I'm not sure yet. So you you, you I, my personal recommendation is to just try it out. See if you like the Genius Bar thing. See if you like the camera thing. Um, and if, however, if you, if you can get it cheaper, I'd probably, I'll probably be leaning more towards the buy. But for 79 bucks, I would say try it. For, for me, anyway. And that's been the review of the T-Mobile MyTouch and MyTouch Q. I'm Nicole Lee from Twit. And I'm Tony Wayne from Twit. Uh, can we swap phones? Yeah, here, try my keyboard. Oh, mm. look at your display. Look at that. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, uh, Nicole. Uh, also, Nicole and Tony with that uh, review of the MyTouch. Um, you know, I think I think we're seeing a lot of very interesting phones out there, and a lot of um, a lot of inexpensive phones. I think that's really great. All right, coming up in just a bit. This is this is our our killer review. Uh, Eileen Rivera has been dying to get this thing in her in her hands. She was so excited when it came in. I told her enjoy it because she got it the day before the iPad three was announced. I said enjoy it because you're going to want the iPad three when it comes out. But I have to say, seven point seven inches that screen. We're going to talk about. This, the Galaxy Tab 7.7 in just a minute, but first, a word from our friends at Ford and the incredible 2013 Ford Taurus with curve control. You know, they talk a lot about autonomous vehicles, vehicles that drive themselves. Google's got those drive-themselves cars and stuff, but, but it makes people nervous. And Ford's strategy in all of this is, I think, very clever. I actually uh, I got this from Alan Mulally, the CEO of Ford. He explained it to me. He said, Leo, people love to drive. And they, not, they don't really want to take their hands off the wheel and just let the car do it. So, And we do this in cockpits, too. You always need a pilot. But what you do is you let the electronics, the, 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 the systems, help the driver be a safer, better driver. They don't take over. They just assist. And that's what this curve control does. 100 times every second, the computer in the car takes a look at things like roll rate, that's roll is like that. Yaw rate up and down, the lateral acceleration, the wheel speed, the steering angle. What it's checking is, are you actually trying to turn the car faster than it can go? Because that's how you spin it out, right? And if it senses a problem to prevent that spin out, the loss of control on the curve, even if you're turning really hard, the curve control applies several factors to make it safe. It, it rapidly reduces engine torque. It applies four-wheel braking which slows the vehicle as much as 10 miles an hour every second. And it works on wet or drive payment. And all of a sudden, you're taking that turn. You may not even notice it. Remember when we first got anti-lock brakes and, uh, and, and you didn't have to tap the brake anymore? You couldn't jam the brake on? The brake protected you. It did the right thing even when you didn't want to, when your instinct was to jam the brake, lock the wheels. Same thing with this curve control. It gets you out of tough situations. I'm thrilled that they're putting these on the new 2013 Tauruses. As my son starts driving, I'm just thrilled that he's coming into a world where cars are safer than ever. And we really got to, uh, we owe a big thank you to Ford Motor Company for focusing on technology and using technology to make these cars safer. You can check it out yourself. Drive one at a Ford dealer near you, the 2013 Ford Taurus, or visit them online, ford.com slash cars slash Taurus. I think you'll enjoy what you see. All right. Speaking of enjoying what you see, I, Eileen was so excited. Eileen Rivera, who produces many of our shows and, of course, is the host of All About Android, so she's really into these Android devices, has been waiting for the iPad killer, a tablet that has as good a screen as the Retina display, runs the latest ice cream sandwich operating system, has all that googly goodness, and is fast. She says, perhaps... This is it. Let's take a look at Eileen Rivera's review of the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7.7. Hey everyone, Eileen Rivera here with twit.tv and before you buy and today I have another Android tablet. This time I have the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7.7, .7. not the 7.0, not the 8.9, not the 10.1, not the Note which is 5.3 and not even the coming 10.1. No, seriously, this is the latest offering in tablet design from Samsung. It's a pretty nice one. Let me walk you through. Super AMOLED Plus 1280 by 800 display is what they're touting on this thing and it is gorgeous. When I play video off of it, it looks really, really beautiful and crisp. The blacks are beautiful and uh, playing games is really good as well. Let me kind of just kind of scroll through. Dual core, 1.4 gigahertz dual core processing, one gig of RAM on this. You can kind of flip through the app drawer pretty fast too. 
The other selling point to this uh, tablet, it is super thin, 7.89 millimeters. Very, very nice to hold. Actually, it's pretty sturdy too. Uh, Samsung gets a lot of flack for some of their phones for feeling plasticky and even though they're thin, but this thin tablet feels really, really sturdy and I love it. I actually like holding it better than uh, Kindle Fire and the Nook tablet as well. All right, uh, 4G LTE. I have the United States version of this tablet here. The international version doesn't have LTE, but the international version from what I understand has receiver mode so you can actually make calls. Uh, also, 16 gigs of storage space on this tablet, and it's, it's expandable to 32 with the micro SD card slot right over here, which is very, very handy. 3.2 megapixel camera on the back, 2. Point megapixel camera on the front. Kind of skimped on that, I think. I'm not quite sure why they did that. Uh, other things about the Samsung uh, tablet. This is kind of interesting. It's got a little dock here, a little mini dock for some, uh, some Samsung apps like the music player. You launch that and it pops up here, overlays on your screen, and you can have your music start right away. One thing about the music, the speakers here I think are actually pretty decent. We've got a little speaker here on the bottom left and right. I was pretty impressed uh, with the way the music was playing out of the tablet. Uh, other thing about this tablet, it is running Honeycomb 3.0, not the latest OS that some of the tablets, newer tablets are coming out with. That is Ice Cream Sandwich, so that is a little disappointing, but apparently this is upgradable to Ice Cream Sandwich. We don't know when this tablet will get this. Um, also, let me show you this little uh, button down here, which is a little bit different. This is not a menu button. It is a screen capture button. I actually got a little confused every once in a while and tried to use it as a, a menu button only to be taking screenshots of my screen. And then once you've got it there, oh, maybe you want to draw on that as well. Battery life on this thing is incredible. I have to say, even with the uh, 4G LTE, uh, all day, lasts all day, never, uh, didn't charge it for uh, over 24 hours one day, and the battery was still going, plugging along, either on Wi-Fi or on 4G, so very, very impressive. It has a 5100 milliamp battery inside this little bad boy here. Camera quality on this thing, yeah, I said it was 3.2 megapixels, so there's a little bit of noise when uh, you're either uh, capturing video or uh, taking some pictures. It looks nice on here, but every once in a while you'll see the graininess come out on uh, your photos. And video, uh, 720p video recording, it can handle. Again, a little bit of noise, not great, but you know, kind of still wonder why they skimped out on the camera back here. Now this, I have to say, is a pretty impressive device. I was very uh, excited to play around with it. I don't know if you remember uh, on the other show that I do all about Android, when I first saw this device at CES, I kind of clutched it and I didn't want to let it go. And I'm very glad to have it now. Uh, pros with, with this device, the screen, the display is gorgeous as I've shown it off before. Uh, the form factor, very easy, sturdy, thin, lovely, lovely, lovely device itself. The speed is really good with the dual core processing. Cons, now this is where um, it gets a little sad. $500 plus a two year contract kind of expensive here. Uh, you can buy the device without a contract that will cost you $700 and in a world where there is a monster tablet out there kind of dominating uh, that platform sometimes I feel like it's just a little hard to uh, to justify the price of this really great device. Uh, also Google is supposedly coming out with their own possibly $250 tablet uh, with Asus so price um, says a lot. I feel like if this was even bumped down to 350 I would be able to recommend it a little bit more. Also, Android 3.0, we never know. We don't know when I Ice Cream Sandwich will be coming to this device, so I think it's definitely a con to not have the latest operating system shipped out uh, with this device. So buy, try, or don't buy. This is a fabulous device, and I hate to say price is going to knock it down a bit, um, but it does, so I'm going to say try. I'm Eileen Rivera with twit.tv and before you buy and this was the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7.7. So I stand corrected. I thought it was, you know, it's hard, sometimes it's hard to tell. It is not a uh, ice cream sandwich. It's honeycomb. That is a, that, I'm not crazy about ice cream sandwich, but I really don't like honeycomb. Now you can be pretty sure Samsung will update this quickly, but you know, I think uh, Eileen, I think some of the, I think some of the uh, 
the dew is off the rose on this uh, 7.7 inch Samsung Galaxy Tab. Uh, I notice she doesn't have it anymore, does she? I have it. <laughs> She's gone. <laughs> Thank you to Eileen, to Tony Wang, to Ayaz Akhtar, and to our producer, Nicole Lee, for great reviews. Don't forget, you can see all of our reviews in their entirety. Some of them you, you just see a little bit of on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash twit. You should also subscribe to Before You Buy. You'll find uh, previous episodes at twit.tv slash byb. Or just go to iTunes and subscribe so you'll get it automatically. We have audio and video as well. Although it's always more fun to watch the video so you can see what these look like. I thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and uh, we do record this show Thursday evenings around 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern if you want to stop by the live recording. Um, otherwise, please do subscribe and make sure you get every single episode of Before You Buy. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. And remember, you got to watch Before You Buy. Before You Buy.